Hello everyone and welcome back to this lesson dedicated to emergency plans for cultural heritage institutions. Uh, in this part we are talking about the different phases for the drawing up of an emergency plan for a museum. We have already seen the first phase which is the collection of information and documents and the second phase which was the flow analysis of the museum. The third phase is the actual risk analysis. So after the definition of the uh, operative scenarios, we can proceed with the actual risk analysis to assign a numerical value to each risk and thus to establish a hierarchy of mitigation activities to be implemented. So first of all, it is necessary to identify which threats you want to, fo to focus your analysis on. And the most common are flood, fire, uh, unauthorized entry, intrus intrusion, um, electric blackout, but it could also be failure of the security systems, terrorism, uh, vandalism, uh, uh, environmental conditions not favorable to conservations, uh, insects and rodents, and so on. So once you have identified the threats and the risk scenarios, you can proceed with identifying the vulnerabilities. Once the threats to be considered um, have been identified, it will be necessary to create all the possible combinations between operational scenarios threats and areas of the museum, identifying the vulnerabilities found for each of them during the inspection. This, uh, the risk can be then calculated um, as follows. For each combination of scenarios, threat, area, the risk will be equal to the product of the level of probability of uh, occurrence of each threat and its level of impact on the collection. Furthermore, for each um, combination of threat scenario area, it is necessary to establish the mitigation measures to protect the assets for, from that risk differentiating between those already active and those that should be instead implemented as soon as possible. So here in this slide, you can see an analysis, an example of a risk analysis. So as you can see, we have uh, in the first column, the area of the museum uh, that we are analyzing. So for example, the deposit, the offices, the exhibition areas. In the second column, uh, you can see the operating conditions of the museum, so basically the risk scenarios. So, for example, uh, museum closed, open museum, uh, maintenance, activity, and so on. Uh, then you can see the threat that we are um, analyzing. So, for example, here we have put flood, fire, unauthorized entry, the vulnerability uh, identified for each threat. So, for example, for flood, a vul vulnerability could be that the artworks are placed on the ground in the deposit. Or, for example, um, a vulnerability for fire could be that the museum does not have an automatic extinguishing system. After that, uh, there is a description of the impact that that particular threat uh, could have on the museum. So, for example, damage to assets, damage to the image of the museum, uh, damage to people, um, and so on. After that, we will start with the uh, proper calculation of the risk. So, we will uh, identify a level of probability and a level of impact. So the risk will be basically the product of these two numbers. And depending on uh, which is the result of this product, the risk will be as acceptable or not. So as you can see, we have put two examples of non-acceptable 
acceptable risks and one example of, a, of an acceptable risk. In the um, right uh, section of the risk analysis, you can see all the mitigation measures that can be identified for that particular risk. In green, we have the um, measures that are already put in place inside the museum, while in red, <coughs> you can see some example of the mitigation measures that have to be uh, implemented as soon as possible. So in this way, you will have a um, visual representation of the um, mitigation measures that have to be uh, implemented as soon as possible. Um, this last section that we have uh, just seen of the risk analysis can be used later on to draw up a risk, a risk treatment plan. This document includes all the vulnerabilities found during the preliminary uh, analysis. Um, and for each of them, they are indicated the mitigation measures to be activated in a hierarchical order from the most urgent to the least urgent. And this document is very useful because serves as a starting point for the institution to plan all the risk mitigation activities, trying to balance the interventions with the real needs of the building and deferring investments over time. So as you can see in this slide, we have put um, an example of a risk treatment plan. So you can see in the left, there is the threat, the mitigation measure that has to be implemented and a description of the methodology for implementing these um, specific measure, a responsible for the implementation of the uh, mitigation measure, as well as a priority um, and a date um, where the mitigation measure has to be implemented by. Thank you very much. That's it for this phase. And I will see you in the next uh, parts of the lesson.